Welcome back. In this video, I've collected all the stains that you'll have to study for your step one exam. When you're studying for step one, you're going to find some stains in the microbiology section, and you're also going to find some in the biochemistry or maybe in the respiratory system. And in this video, I've collected all the stains from all the sources altogether, so you're going to find everything in here. First, we have Gimza stain which is basically eosine and methylene blue. To remember the organisms that can be stained with Gimza stain, remember the road to Gimza passes by Chlamydia. So, Rickettsia, Trypanomas, Plasmodium, Borrelia, and Chlamydia. Next we have Gram stain, which stains the peptidoglycan layer. After using the stain, purple cells means positive, and red cells means negative. However, we do have some organisms that cannot be stained using gram stain. So if you use gram stain in the following organisms, you're not gonna see anything. To memorize them, remember this mnemonic. These microscopic rascals may look colorless. And of course, the best way to memorize something is to understand the thing first. So the reason we cannot stain trypanomas is because they have very small peptidoglycan layer. And we cannot stain microbacteria because most of their cell wall is lipid. And we can't stain rickettsia because it's mostly an intracellular organism. Mycoplasma have no cell wall. Legionella have unique peptidoglycan layer. And chlamydia is mostly an intracellular organism as well. So these are the ones that we cannot stain using gram stain. Acidic shift stains glucose, glycogen, and glycoprotein. And to memorize the uses, remember the word TAG. Trophorema whipple, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, and glycogen storage disorders. Trophorema whipple contains a lot of glucose, and that's why it's stained. In alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, the alpha-1 antitrypsin is accumulated inside the cell. And the main component of alpha-1 antitrypsin is actually glycoprotein, that's why it's stained. And in glycogen storage disorders, you can have a lot of glycogen accumulated inside the cell. Zeal nielsen stain is one of the more important ones. And it stains the mycolic acid. It's mainly used to stain mycobacteria, nocardia, and protozoa. Carbon fusion can also be used to stain acid fasting bacteria, and it uses an aline dye. Oramine rhodamine stain can also be used to stain acid fasting bacteria, and it's also much cheaper but it's less specific. Indian ink can be used for thick capsulated organisms. It will stain the background while leaving the organism intact. So basically stains everything except the organism. But if you want to stain the organism itself, we can use mucicaramine stain, which stains the capsule itself. And here are some other very important stains. Silver stain can be used for Legionella, H. pylori, and fungi. Prussian stain can be used to stain iron and asbestosis. This is a very, very important one. Right stain can be used to stain RBCs and platelets. When using H and E stain, calcium will appear black or dark brown. And finally, Sudan black stain is used to stain fat. We use this stain with stool samples to diagnose malabsorption. Congo red stains amyloidosis. And the S100 stains Schwann cells and neural cells. So this concludes all the stains that you have to study for your step one exam. And now let's have a small quiz. Which stain can we use to diagnose alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency? And which stain can we use to diagnose Borrelia? And here are the answers. 
Alright guys, that's everything I've got. Hopefully this is easier for you. Thanks a ton for watching and I'll see you guys later.